Hey everyone and welcome to Already Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about The Leftovers Season 1, Episode 8, it is called Cairo, full spoilers for the episode as always. First up, apologies, we, we once again slipped, uh, slipped the slot, so we missed our midweek episode, but hey, we're, we're here now and uh, this is probably most definitely the best episode of the show so far. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Like, holy shit. Um, I was not prepared for this episode, I think, when I started it, and it, it advanced things in a big way, it did some things that I really did not expect, uh, it also proved me right about something, so I'm going to rub that in your face a little bit later on. Um, okay, I don't even yeah. recall what that is, but I, I love that you've clearly remembered. Oh, I did. As soon as it came yeah. up, I was like smirking, I was like, oh, 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 I'm going to rub that in his ginger face. I literally have no idea what you're on about. There's also something you... I mean, I didn't dispute you in this other thing, but there's something you brought up that did kind of pan out to something in this episode as well. I'm not going to tell you what it is, though, if you don't remember. Cause so, I, that's it. I've, ch- I, I've spoken so much bollocks over the course of the last seven episodes or whatever yeah. it was. That by the time we get to this, I don't, I don't remember half the, yeah. half the shit I've said. But this was a big emotional climax, but also a climax in terms of what Kevin's going through and his his weird like memories and blacking out and what's going on with him and these weird dreams that he's having and like is any of that real what's going on there's a lot that stuff do you, do you know what i love about the start of this episode go on it's so normal for this show it's just you know just drops you in like oh this is a normal episode stuff's mm. happening and then it gets to a point and it's like oh okay shit's just hit the fan yeah, because he, he he goes to sleep. He wakes up and he's he's in he's in the car. He's in he's in the woods and he's like, well, why am I here? And then uh, the baldy gunny man, whose name I still don't goddamn know. Which to be fair, it's kind of a plot point almost that he's kind of a ghost. Like she like uh, Patty even brings this up that she can't find out any info on him. That's it. I'm sure it's been said, but I can't remember it. Yeah, uh, but like he he's there and then it's like they go into this this cabin in the woods and. Patty's tied up. He seems to have abduct- abducted her in the night uh, in a moment of violence, and uh, like, okay, here and obviously he's in shock. He's like, "What happened?" He, he asks, "Like, what the hell did we do last night?" And it seems like, yeah, when he's been like doing these other things with this guy, that he's not remembering that he's he's essentially they they kind of talk about it like he's another person, uh, yeah. whether whether it's actually like a different personality or if it's just like flat out blackouts or or just this is him and he's drunk kind of idea but like there's certainly something going on and obviously he's worried that he's going crazy so all this is coming up it's all very big Uh, and it's later on in the episode obviously they've been talking about what to do with Patty like he's he wants to let her go and just take her home and just that be the end of it doesn't want anything to come of it but she's like no no no. if you take me home I'm going to tell everyone you're losing your goddamn job like she she is super also you can tell how far gone it is because she's talking Oh yeah, she she immediately just starts talking. Like she doesn't even hold back a, a, for a moment. It's just immediately she starts she starts yapping away to the point where you almost see Kevin want to just tell it shut. Up. <laughs> it's it's great, isn't it? <laughs> um, but no, he, he's out in the woods. And do you remember his white shirts? Yeah, this is where I'm going to rub something in your face. The white shirts. Do you remember the white shirts? Yeah. yeah. The white shirts that he's missing. And I speculated that when he went to the dry cleaners and he demanded that he give him eight white shirts or whatever the number was uh, I speculated wait are they even his shirts has he just handed them like you know plain white shirts and part of my speculation was based on the fact that his shirts like his actual shirts all have like uh, badges like sort of yeah, uh, yeah. on them and you said nah because you gave him the exact number you gave him eight and I went okay I, don't know. I just it was a thought I had and here we go plot point reveal eat it eat that crow Fair enough. I, I, honestly, when, once you started talking about it now, I was like, oh yeah, we did have that discussion. But I'd, I'd forgotten. So, well done you. Disg- more, more like fiery heated argument Look, to the death. this is the point though. You, you, you said I was right about something. I don't even remember what that was. So you're going to have to let me know when that comes up. Just, oh, no, just no so, I am not. Just I'm so not, I'm aware. I'm not letting you. I mean, that wasn't a debate. The other one more so. It was more just you had the initial idea. Whereas this was, no, we, 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 we butted heads on this one. I'm intrigued one. as to what idea I had. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so, so he sees all these, these, all these white shirts, the ones that have been missing, and they're all kind of like 
stapled or nailed up to various trees in this area. Yeah. So he's been coming out here when he's been in his, his, his Dr. Hyde mode, if you want to call it that. He's been out here doing something. We don't know what, something violent, something dangerous, but he's taking his shirt off and he's stabbing it into the trees. Right, right, been doing some, some plotting. But that, that's going on. But yeah, so a, a lot of this episode is them in this cabin and he's trying to figure things out. He, he, he doesn't want to, like, he doesn't want to hurt her. He, he wants to take her home, but she's not going to let that happen. And it's ultimately after this reveal of the shirts and the reveal that he's going crazy, he wants to prove to himself that it doesn't matter. Like, he would rather be okay and work this out the way it should be worked out, uh, even if it does mean losing his job, that he comes in and says, you know what, no, 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 I don't, I don't care. Like, I'm taking you in. Uh, you don't have to rat me out because I'm going to do it. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to be accountable for anything I've done and presumably get help if he needs help. For Well, I'd say he'll be able to almost have an insanity play by saying, look, I legitimately, you know, I don't remember it, mm. I need help. So he'll, he'll still get punished, but he'll get help at the same time. And maybe that's the point where he's at. He's kind of broken. Yeah, and at this point, Baldi's uh, went away. Bal- Baldi's pissed up because they have a fight Like because Baldi tries to kill her. He goes back to the cabin and he's, he's got a, a bag over her head. And he has to fight him to take this bag off, and that's when mm-hmm. Baldy like gets pissed and pissed and leaves. Um, but my God, the, the the final ten minutes of this episode, the the, the final scenes uh, that play out between the two of these characters is phenomenal. The music's also phenomenal, but like yeah. the, these two, uh, and it's like, oh, why why weren't we letting Patty talk all this time? Because because she's done a good job of it. <laughs> but he he basically. He's like, yeah, I'm going to take you in and I'm going to tell them what I've done and like I'll account for it. And he, he, sh- they basically started talking about what the guilty remnant are and why they do what they do. And he's like, I don't understand you people. And she's like, oh, well, I'm going to make you understand. I want you to understand like what we are. We're here to remind everyone wants to forget. Everyone, like everything is based on forgetting the people so the pain will go away but it's all bullshit it's all fake it's all you know we are here to remind you of this the, the, the line i love this says uh we get rid of all the the colorful distractions which is you know mm. why they always wear white yeah yeah um but ultimately ultimately it gets to the 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 revolution they start talking about gladys mm. and uh he, he brings up gladys and she's like oh you remember her name and like, well, of course I remember her name, <laughs> like, after what happened to her. And you get this kind of sinking feeling as she's happy that she, he remembers her name. And this is all about remembering. Yeah. And he gets the same idea and he's he, he just flat out says, did you kill her? And honestly, that thought had never crossed my mind based on the actual scene, like when we saw it. I'd say I don't think it had crossed his mind either up till this moment. Yeah. Um, like, because it was so violent. And that's the thing, that it's so easy, not not to justify, justify is not the right word, but it's so easy to write it off as oh, the angry mob, because everyone hates these people. They all despise yeah. them. It's so easy to just say, no, this was an angry mob. This was a... And, and, and we even had that guy who was like, don't look into it too hard. Like The, the people yeah. don't care that this happened. They're, they're kind of glad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, and it just it sinks in. And I love her response as well. She doesn't even say yes. She just says she was okay with it. And that hurt hard because we saw her. We saw her die. We saw her pleading at the last final moments where she'd kind of, whatever decision she made to agree to. She'd regret it. Yeah. yeah, In those final moments, she was regretting agreeing to this decision. And it paints a dark cloud over the other things that are going on in this episode, which we'll get to when we're we're talking about uh, the other plots. But uh, it's this horrific stuff. And she wants him to go nuts and kill her. Because she wants this ending. She wants to be remembered as this victim. Yeah, she, she wants to be a martyr. She, yeah, the martyr, exactly. She, she wants the guilty remnant to go through this constant cycle of mar- martyrdom to, so that no one can ever forget. And it's uh, it's almost funny, like going back to that that uh, that phone call he had with the, the guy, that the, the government or whatever body yeah. he was from. And he was like, oh, I'll just go in and kill him off if you want. And I'm like, would, would they have wanted, or would she have wanted that almost? I don't think so. I think here it's it's one at a time. There's a mm. there's a press flow almost. You know, it's it's a constant reminder because there's always going to be one. It, it makes me wonder if you wipe them all out, it's it's a story, and then yeah. you know, three months later, it's you know no one remembers. I wonder like how much effect they want it to have because as much as Kevin remembers Gladys's name and he remembers that incident, 
Is he the only one, or is there only just a few people in this town? Because when we saw her be disposed of at the company, like they take her to this factory and she just goes in a furnace, we commented on how soulless it was and how like no one is even paying attention to her. No one cares. I think this is why there's chapters all over. The, I mean, he even brings up there's chapters mm. in like every city, whatever. It's it's the idea that no, they're they're just making their area remember. But then, gradually, if they all remember yeah. one one chapter, then it doesn't matter that the others don't remember these events because they'll have their own. Which is interesting because he asks if the if she answers to someone because there are higher up sort of commanding, mm. you know, all the branches, and she just kind of laughs it off. She doesn't really give him a straight answer though, which makes me wonder: is there maybe someone at least? Yeah, because she, she she says, "Oh, who do you take your orders from?" And she her her answer is, "We don't take orders." Not there isn't someone yeah. there. Yeah, it's, like, it's interesting. The idea that maybe if it's not orders, it's suggestions. Also, it's also interesting to me that. Now learning like how far they're willing to go to make people remember like, remember this, it's almost like they're the anti Wayne. Whereas Wayne's whole thing is about taking their pain away and letting them get over it. Whereas, yeah. whereas they're like, no, you can't get over it. If you're getting over it, that's fake. Like, no, you 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 feel the pain. I, I love the moment where she makes it hit hard for Kevin, like where you know, she says, "Oh, Gladys, she she was okay with it." And and Laurie will be when her time comes too. Oh yeah, that's when it gets super dark. Because ah, do you it. think Laurie knows yet? I don't think she does. Because I I think like when they when they went out there to find the body, you see Laurie's reaction. She is in shock. Well, that's it. But how how many of them? Because because Laurie seems quite high up in the organization, doesn't she? Like mm. when when it, just in the rest of this episode, when Patty's not around, people look up to her. Yeah, well, I, I think that's maybe a case of it's not the local people who did it. It's like you know. Patty brings oh, in. Oh, getting another chapter. Either another chapter, or maybe if there is a higher up, there's a higher up group that actually do the killings themselves if they need them to. Mm, kind of, kind of idea. Be. Or is it just a simple case of hiring a few people? Like you know, I mean, it's a weird hitman job, but it's not yeah. out of the realm of possibility. Yeah. No, you're right. Cause it, yeah. That's it. Her, her reaction at least seemed genuine. Yeah, I, I don't think they know. I, I, I feel like much like actual like uh, like suicide like bombers and things like that i think it's you groom them for a long time before you get them to commit to something like that that's it yeah yeah because especially now i'm thinking back at it their their reactions were just amongst themselves they had no reason to put on such a show if they Mm. all knew about it Uh, i mean obviously once the police were all around then obviously then they would but But yeah but laurie Laurie fell fell at the ground and she broke down like she she was Absolutely, yeah. and it, do you know what I like about this? I'm just going to be a really fascinating rewatch to go back and watch, knowing this is what they're doing and this is what they're actually aiming for. Like, it adds a, a whole other level to you know that that conversation where Patty took Laura out to the the diner. Yeah, yeah. that's speaking. what I was thinking that day. And, and she yeah. and she was saying how she took Gladys here, and you know, uh, uh, and they had this conversation. It very much feels like no, you Laurie was groomed for being next. Yeah, that's that's what it feels like. And even just in the, the simple idea that I think at the time we said, "Oh, this is almost like a sweet." She knows she needs time to get over this, but now it feels very different. Now it feels like, "No, no, no, you you were capitalizing on the pain." This was strategic. What you yeah. were doing here, rather than being a human moment, it makes me interested. Obviously, um, with with Patty, you know, she's clearly the, or it seems like she's the only one who knows. Hmm. And obviously, when she's not around, people look up to, to Laurie. Is there someone above Patty that you know that will go right, Laurie? You've got to step up. You know, this is this is what happens. If, if is there a you know is there a chain of command ready? It also it makes their entire thing just dark and like. Is I think now now you think about them, they're, they're camping outside of people's houses. And then they want to recruit them to ultimately have them be a martyr. Like the whole thing feels really dark just from the get go now. Yeah, it does. And it also contrasts really great because um, the stuff we have with uh, with Meg and Laurie in this just a there's a moment where Laurie says no violence. That's not what we do because violence is weak. Whereas mm. literally, like her entire point, Patty, she's won through violence. Yeah. Yeah. It's self-inflicted violence, but it's still but violence. It's still violence, yeah. Like, like, like violence is what has proved the point. Which, which maybe is interesting to me. Like maybe when the time comes when Laurie learns that this is what she's supposed to do, does that when she actually throws away this this ideology and says no? Like, yeah, is is it what snaps her out of it? Is that yeah? Is that is that what crosses or the line? Does she 
trust the lion and go against it entirely, or does she try and, you know, bring stick with the group but not do that? Yeah, I could see it either, but I, I think that will be the start of the crumble. Like maybe where mm. this like right now it's like total devotion, like. Meg is freaking out like because when we first cut to Meg in this episode, she's like she's beating up, beating up Matt. She, she's wailing up, and, yeah. and actually one of my favorite little touches is there's some like specks of blood on her shirt because yeah. obviously it's white, so it's just these bright red splotches. Uh, and she comes in and she's swearing, she's speaking, she's shouting, she is so pissed because he had something a flyer with something about her mother on it. I didn't quite yeah. catch what it was, but whatever it is, it's it's completely upset her, and she's assaulted him. And she's talking, and Laurie eventually, of course, takes her over to apologise because they shouldn't use violence. That's again, like you say, that's the whole thing here. As we find out, she's she's totally against them using violence. And they go over, uh, and there's this great moment when they go in, and Nora's there. Nora's actually helping Matt's wife, uh, which makes sense because they're brother and sister. Makes sense. She's over helping uh, yeah. from time to time, and she makes Meg apologise, and she writes it in a pad, and she's you know, apologies, and she accepts her apology, and Nora just. Not holding back, turns around super cynical, like, uh, does that really mean much? And it sounds like yeah, she goes, she, goes oh, she doesn't mean it. Yeah. And he's like, but she's here, and that's a start. Like, yeah. And you know, you get his point. I, and it, I love how genuine he is. It's hard not to like him. Yeah, you feel like, yeah, I mean, she's right, but he's also right. Like, she didn't even necessarily have to come here. So it, the fact that she that's made the it. trip is at least something. And he has such faith and belief, not even like just in a religious sense. He has such a a faith in people doing the ultimately doing the right thing that's why mm. he keeps doing this yeah. and it's really interesting um i'm going to skip over something else that nora says because it relates more to yeah uh, another plot but so so we have this and we also have them doing this job uh, patty gave laurie money early on and the opening scene with patty as well there was intercutting with uh, kevin setting the table for dinner because the nora was coming over to meet jill and uh, all that uh they're laying out all these clothes, and you got quite quickly. Oh, this is clothes of people who disappeared. They're, yeah. they're obviously they're reassembling all these clothes. Like there's like a high school jock football player kind of outfit. There's like a little girl's outfit. There's a ton of them. They're all spread it over the mm. floor in the church that they've uh, stole from that. And basically, they're waiting, and they have a little thing. And he, he, like Meg keeps pointing out, like, no, 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 this is bullshit. They throw it as they spit at it as they they spray water at it, as which we actually we saw that one in particular. Mm. Um, and even after all this, like Laurie turns around and says, "Shh, no, we don't speak." She she affirms her, her and it's almost like Matt to a point where she she believes in this so blindly. Uh, but in this case, we kind of know it's. I mean, I mean, her perspective. I mean, she might surprise us, and she might actually be into this eventually. But at least yeah. in this episode, she is very against them using violence. So it feels like it's a mistake for her to be this devout towards this cause. It does. It does. I think again to to bring up how it parallels Matt. It's he, he's had his faith tested multiple mm. times. We've seen that over the show. I mean, he's told us multiple stories of how he's had his faith tested, but he's always come out of it just as strong. Whereas Will, Will Laurie, once once this is revealed to her and her faith in the in this group is tested, will, yeah. will it survive? I don't know. Uh, but this this truck pulls up and they, they pay the money. And it becomes quite... You don't see what they are, really. You, don't, you never see them unwrapped. But you get a sense, oh, this is these fake bodies. Yeah. And you very quickly get this idea that, wait a minute, they have they have somehow paid for all these people who disappeared to be recreated as corpses. Yeah, because be- uh, this is it. It's been, it's been seeded so well. Yeah. So obviously, we see it now, so we get what it is. But we, we've we been had these bodies shot multiple times so we know what they yeah. are we know how much they cost and we know this, how they get made and obviously the sickest part of it of course is they're taking out the bodies and they're various sizes and then there's one that's tiny it's like a it's like a baby and yeah. it's like oh jesus christ like who <laughs> and, and it's like oh this is what the pictures were for yeah that, that was the other thing it, it retroactively gives that that because on its own that was very cruel like sneaking into people's houses and taking photos of their loved ones but now it's like, oh no, this is a purpose. Like it, retroactively, my complaint. Well, well, technically, all the photos are probably online and on Facebook and stuff now, anyway. So what, what the hell? Uh, outside of the, the privacy invasion, uh, but now it's like, oh no, no, they needed, they wanted access to them for reference. Well, that's it. Like I remember, uh, Nora. I think it was the episode after. Mm. Nora wasn't really that 
bothered. She was like, oh, those those weirdos stole, broke into the house and stole some photos. But she wasn't, you know, devastated by it. Like, like you say, she clearly had digital copies of any, anything. Yeah. She could still see all the photos. So she wasn't, you know, crushed. Like, if, the, if that was the plan, the Gary Raymond didn't really succeed, did they? But now you see the, the larger picture. I feel like we're building up to the finale here and they've got some hideous display. I, I don't know if they're going to... That's it's It's... Where do they put these bodies? Because obviously, we've got all the clothes, we've got the bodies. Presumably, the clothes are to recreate. They're either just from the pictures, or more likely, they're somehow the copies of the ones that they they vanished in. They're recreating well, that day. I don't know because if they've got them, if they're using the photos for reference, I feel like that what they're maybe doing is using the photos because the photos are of happy memories, mm, and maybe okay. that hurts more. Because how would they know what they were wearing on the day they vanished? Like on a large Patty, scale. Pat, uh, I don't know exactly, but Patty says in this episode that she she used to be doing a lot of research. Uh, she was a, true. So you know she she's because she she who, says to the Baldy, you know, I, I'm good at this stuff. Who would even have a record of all that though? I mean, do you think the police would have taken memory? Just you know, well, I mean, people would, like, have who, been, who, would they have gone down as missing persons? After the first fifty, I don't know. Like, at what no, point? No, that, did... that's that's a question. If they if they did go down as missing persons, then they would have said, right, you know, what were they last seen wearing? Oh, Maybe sure. Maybe they did that anyway. Uh, alternatively, just you know, pe- speaking, asking around, you know, find, you know, that that would if... be that would be uh, if that's the case. That would be the only way I'd buy that she got that information. Otherwise, I don't see how anyone could know what they were all wearing on the day they went. Like, how could they even collect that information? E- even like even if everyone had someone who saw them or knew what they were wearing, yeah. like otherwise, why would they write it down or why would they say it somewhere or why would they like? No, no, that's it. The, the only other way is if I, they'd actually I, been actively asking people. I could, I could going, buy hey, what was what was that person wearing that day? I could buy a handful of them being known, but mm. all all of these people, nah. Like, so I feel like no, they're recreating them for the photos uh, to recreate these happy happy memories, which will be more Just, and. My first thought is they're going to have them hanging on nooses outside each other's houses, but that's maybe... No, 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 no. That's too dark, maybe. <laughs> uh, what I'd do is uh, reverse the photos. You know you know how they they, 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 they they broke in and took the photos? Hmm. Break back in and put them in, in the beds and stuff like that. Ah, uh, put them in the beds. Yeah. Oh, it, it depends, because if they wanted to recreate what they were doing, but uh, that means... Uh, that... I, I think what they do is, if they put them in the beds so that when when people see them just at first because obviously they're very lifelike we've seen that mm-hmm. they'll go oh they're back and they'll and then they'll have that crushing disappointment all over again that that loss will hit them again that they're gone and they'll remember that said sneaking in while people are all lying in their beds is going to be a lot harder to do without being caught it is it is going to be caught but i, I think i think the idea of making them think they're there and then them losing them again speaks more to their message than just showing them that's assuming it's going to be like case by case, though. That was my first thought. They're all just going to be outside their houses. It may be one big display. Yeah, could be. Uh, where the whole town kind of like gathers round and like notices what they are and like realizes and then starts looking for their own missing people because they realize this is what this is. Uh, That's it. Do they do they even realize it's the Gary Remnant at first? Do they just think, oh, they're back, but they're all these just you know in this mass pile. Uh, I never, I never, just I never yeah, considered yeah. that they might assume they're actually real dead just bodies at, at first. Because until you, like we've seen them, they're, they're relatively realistic. Just at first, when you look at them in a big pile, would you go, "Hang on, they're all back"? Maybe it depends. Again, like I don't think they're going to be wearing the clothes they were wearing when they left. That's it. Yeah, that, that's kind of dependent on that. Which is it? why I think it's going to be more of a display mm. rather than a pile of bodies. I feel like they're going to be, even if it's just all propped up in a line. For the town to like, yeah, sort of see. You know what's really bad is that I know I've watched the end of the season, but mm-hmm. this is this is kind of as far as I remember. I remember them. I remember the like this the the bodies being a thing. Mm-hmm. But I don't remember what they did with them. Not for the life of me. Like even in this episode, because it, it's been a, you know a few years since I watched it, and uh, I was going, oh yeah, that just before it was happening. I was having a lot of those moments. Ah uh, yeah yeah I get you. Um... But, I can't remember for the life of me what they do with these bodies, <laughs> which which is crazy because it's obviously a big going to be a big moment. Hmm. Well, obviously this is all set up. Patty's missing for most of the day. They, they keep kind of saying, "Where's Patty? Has anyone seen Patty?" And at the end of the, the day, 
uh, Laurie kind of goes into Patty's office or desk and starts going through her files and she sees the, the photo of Nora with her family and it sort of sets up the idea that she's going to be taking the reins now that Nora, now that Patty's gone for yeah, however long. Yeah, it kind of seems every, everything she needed is in that big, massive folder. Yeah, so that, that seems to be... Because, I mean, they don't know for sure she's gone for good, but there's like, oh, she might be, or at least, it, while she's gone, this has to be taken care they're of. They're at least acting under the assumption yeah. that, well, if she's not here, I'm going to have to step up. Yeah, because as people ask, what about tomorrow, we're still doing it, and she like goes up on the board and says, still on, underline, like we're still doing it. And then, of course, someone chaps at the door. And I'm not going to reveal who that... Well, I mean, you know who, because we're doing full spoilers, so you've watched the episode. But I'm going to go back the way to the start of the episode. I'm going to start back at the start of this plot to how we get here. So the thing that you brought up uh, a while ago, there wasn't a debate. I mean, I agreed with you. Uh, but we, we, we speculated maybe there was like an age limit, and that's why they didn't target someone like this. But you said that, that Jill would kind of acted like someone who the Guilty Remnant might target. Yeah. Uh, and it was especially telling to me in this episode... At the dinner table scene at the start, where Nora's there, and she's basically prodding Nora because she doesn't believe that she's okay. Like she, she doesn't compute the idea that she's over this now, that she is somehow getting on with her life to the point where she brings up the gun, which she shouldn't know about. And Nora never yeah. even questions why she knows that. She just sort of goes with it, and she even offers her bag or her purse, and is like, "Yeah, go look." And do you know what I love about this scene though? I love that as she's doing, as she's opening, opening the bag. Kevin's in the shot in the background and the look in his face that she's actually doing it because <laughs> obviously he says oh you don't have to do that and she's like no it's fine it's like Jill don't open that bag and that's fine but the, the look in his face as she's actually like unzipping it and going in I'm like you know what he's right this is so goddamn rude like if that was my daughter I'd be like I'd be mortified that she's actually going through with this absolutely uh, but no great great stuff in that sense but the, that, that was the thing for me is that she's actually she can't compute the idea that she's over this. How could you be over what's after what happened? How could yeah, you she be? Can't, she can't comprehend forgetting. Especially since, like... And Nora had it worse than she did. Like, Nora, Nora lost her whole family. Yeah, of course. She's not had the magic Wayne hog, admittedly. But, like, she doesn't she doesn't understand it. She doesn't... And and that was when I was like, she doesn't want to forget it. And, like, she, she almost resents her for being able to get over it. And that was when I was like, that is very guilty remnant. That is, like, this is very hitting on that, that kind of line of thinking. Um, not to the point where I was I, I speculated like oh she's going to show up there by the end of the episode it was just like that was where my, my, my head was as as she was going through all this to the point where she gets the twins and she breaks into the into Nora's house to look for the gun and she finds it very interestingly inside the uh, one of the kids bedrooms it's under the bed in a, in a board game yeah and uh I thought I thought I thought that was an interesting place as well, just for Nora to put the gun when she because I I don't think she was lying when she said she got rid of it. I think it was just a case of okay, she didn't throw it out, but she she just she well, she left it. it in the room with the memory that she learned to get over. That's it. When she said she got rid of it, she got rid of it in the same way that she got rid of you know the the the, the memories almost of not being able to move well, on. A lot of memories, but the the pain yeah. of the memories. Yeah, yeah, the pain. Yeah. Um, so I, I thought that was a really interesting touch, which I quite liked. Uh, but of course, this came after a confrontation with Amy as well, uh, and you really get the sense that uh, Jill's cutting ties. And Joe, I love, I love that we've been joking all season about how there's this weird sexual tension between Amy and Kevin. And we, we, there was that one moment a couple of episodes ago where Jill, you know, said, "Oh, you're going to be home with my dad," as if she was concerned. Yeah. And we kind of joked about that. I got, "Oh, she's even picking up on it." But in this episode, like they're talking about stuff, and uh, Amy just accuses of her trying to cop block her, her dad because she's like interfering with Nora, and she's like, oh she's not okay, and it's weird, and it's not cool, and she just flat out says, "Did you f my dad?" <laughs> <laughs> and she's just like, "What?" <laughs> and she just just tell me, just I want to know, I need to know, like tell me, and like the twins are just like. How do what do we do in this situation? Um, and Amy. Amy Clearly being sarcastic, just says yes and starts like describing how how good it was and how hard he was and she gives any like detail to make it's, her It's this really ridiculous scenario, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, and she she she's clearly like pissed that she's even been asked this and she's like f- fighting fire with fire essentially and then gets pissed off and leaves. Uh, and you really get this sense that Jill is like cutting her ties, like she's not she she doesn't want to be connected to anything. She yeah. she she doesn't understand why Nora's over this. Uh, and there's that really dark moment where she's going out to the dog with a knife 
And you think, is she is she going on a dark bender here? Like, yeah, and it was especially with the, the whole thing of the the dog representing society. Yeah, uh, but then if we if we go back to comparing the dogs to the guilty remnant, how you know they're not our dogs anymore, and then like the guy offering to kill them as if they're not our people anymore, yeah. and it's the idea that she goes up and cuts the ties, like no, you can go and it's yeah, it's unshackling it. It's yeah. like go do what you need to do. And that's what she wants. She wants to be unshackled from basically real life because we've we've seen that she is struggling to cope with regular people and regular interactions. She doesn't want to be normal. She doesn't want to pretend that things are okay and doesn't want to have all these normal interactions. So, you know, when that door chaps and she comes in and obviously the mixture of emotions in Laurie's face is she sees her daughter coming to her cult. Like, you know, is she proud? Is she kind of sad about it because she doesn't want her daughter to feel that way? You know, like, what, what is going through her head? And then for us, who have just learned that this is ultimately leading to them, you know, becoming martyrs and dying these brutal deaths, it's like, oh, shit, she just... That's it. I, I also, you have to imagine she's kind of concerned as well of, because this is the eve of their biggest thing yet. Mm. Like, what will the reaction from the public be? Obviously, to them... Gladys was a reaction from the public. So what's the reaction going to be to this that they do tomorrow? Yeah, as, as her daughter going to be a target, especially if she still thinks the public is, a, is the, the culprit exactly. uh, for that attack. Which leads me back to the final scene, because we actually didn't talk about the final moment. We, we sort of got close to it, and we, we cut back to Laurie, because it kind of <laughs> spiralled back into that. Um, but yeah, this is all leading to these things, and how devout they are, and we know they're devout, because, and you knew where this was going. When Kevin he unbinds her, because he takes out the knife and it's it's almost like Jill with a dog. It's the exact. It was actually went through my head as he was doing. It. I was like, "This is weird to do this fake out twice and what." It almost made me think he was just going to stab her, like because we'd already had the fake out <laughs> earlier on with the dog. Uh, yeah, which almost like he was going to go. You're right. I I have to do this sort of thing. Yeah, but he he cuts her, her cuts the tape that's binding her to the chair, and you know what she's going to do. As soon as she stands up, she just has that look in her face and she yeah. she picks up the bit of glass, the smashed bit of glass that's lying on the ground and she she goes for it <laughs> in her neck. She's, you know, she's, first, she says to him, you do understand us. You know, as much as, you know, as, much as he's saying uh, he doesn't get it, he, do, you, he does. Do you think he does, though? Yeah, I, I think he does and that's that's kind of what this is. I think his other side, so to speak, is doing this because he does understand and he doesn't like it. I don't, I don't think it's a, that he doesn't understand. I think it's that he's just against it. Oh, yeah, that's fair. I, I, think, I think the reason why I said that is because I don't think Kevin thinks it's right, I guess. is what, what, no, not, not that he yeah. thinks it's right, but I think he does actually understand their mindset. He gets why they're doing okay, it. That's not, fair. He, he yeah. might not agree, but he understands. I, I think that's ultimately what makes his character interesting. It's the struggle between these things and his daughter's basically just given up and went over to their side yeah maybe not not with the full not i mean it's, it's a funny thing like that if they'd known about like their methods and like ultimately killing themselves like would 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 laurie have went to them would, would jill have went to them if she knew it was going to lead to that well o- almost none of them would have presumably yeah imagine so yeah that's why it's a cult they get broken down to that point absolutely so uh, it's a brutal death though blood's seeping out of her neck and like kevin's holding her it's like oh how, how does he explain this how, like where does this go next episode uh i have no idea <laughs> i really I don't, don't. i'm gonna miss pie so Matt, joe it's funny actually quite often especially with shows that have already finished sometimes you kind of accidentally get a spoiler or something that kind of makes you guess something just from a headline or something like that you know there's a lot of headlines recently about leftovers and i was kind of actively avoiding them so i wouldn't get any ideas uh as you do but I saw it was it was the it was the actress uh, was in an interview, and it was uh, all talking about Handmaid's Tale, of course, which she's in, and also Leftovers. And because they were talking about Leftovers, I just assumed, oh, she's in the whole show. It put me into this false sense of security, making me assume that she, oh, she's just a main character for the whole thing. Mm. Uh, so as much as I guessed right before she did it, what she was about to do, there was a good portion of the episode. I was like, well, she's going to be in the whole show. So uh, see, I haven't even I haven't even seen those headlines. Yeah. So. I just had this. It, it put me. In, it almost did the opposite, where it actually enhanced it because I assumed she was safe for a long time. And That's t- it. I've seen this, and I still thought she was safe. Yeah, and, until it got to a certain point of uh, like, oh, this is no return. Okay, I know yeah. what she's going to do. Uh, That's it. The, 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 well, I didn't remember what was happening until Kevin started cutting the binds, and I was like, oh, shit! I remember where this goes. And this was a fantastically directed episode. Uh, it did not surprise me when I noticed the name 
on the directing credit. I didn't catch it. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, Michelle McLaren. Ah. Who okay. also did some fantastic episodes of Breaking Bad. Uh, and she she almost uh, was going to direct... Was it Wonder Woman she was almost going to direct? Yeah, and was it not uh, the Thor film? One of the Thor films before that as well. No, you're, no, Patty Jenkins was going to direct Thor 2 and then directed Wonder oh, Woman. All right. I thought she was involved. I thought she was in touch. She definitely talks for a Marvel film at some point. Maybe Captain Marvel? Maybe. Maybe. She's I, definitely I been in t- been attached or at least strongly she, rumoured at some point. She's on the brink of breaking out into movies. She's done a lot of... Like, there's a lot of great episodes of a lot of good TV shows that she's done. Uh, yeah. And you feel like she's ready to break into a movie. It's just a case of which one's going to be it's, the... It's, it's been a lot of the high-quality TV stuff. Yeah, so so that'll be very interesting when she does break into a movie. But the, uh, the, the, the directing here was great. The, I, I thought... This was an episode where every single plot line was hitting every single note for me. Like yeah. Kevin in the woods with Patty, the way it ended, uh, Jill's like doubt of Nora and her investigating, uh, the the fact that the, the the guilty remnant are bringing these bodies in for some sort of sick display, like everything was firing on all cylinders for me. Like, there wasn't a single plot where I'm like, oh, this is slightly less interesting. Not every single one was paying off and stuff we'd had before. Absolutely. Um, and it's funny because I think we said last episode wasn't as great as the, the previous few, and like now with well, this feels after, now it feels like the calm before the storm, doesn't it? Yeah, and now with this after, I was like, oh man, episode seven looks really weak compared to this, the rest of the season now, given given yeah. everything that's been around it, and that then this hit right after it. So this is, I feel like now obviously we're going to do this anyway because we're, we're committed to doing the whole thing, but I feel like had I got to this episode when it was airing. I, we may not have been able to do this because I probably would have kept watching it. This this would have probably been the episode that hooked me in for like, no matter what, this was going to be a week to week viewing for me. Well, I'd say I, I got to this. I finished the season, obviously, but then I just when it got because it, I distinctly remember it kind of wraps up to a point where mm. it's like you know it's like okay that was a story, and I didn't feel the need to come back next. Even though it was good, I was like I don't need to watch it immediately. Which is funny because, from all account, everything I've heard is that season two season and three better, yeah. are better. So, but by the time I'd heard that, I was like, eh, "I've already missed the boat on season two. And then, by the time season three came around, we were well, we were busy. We were very busy. Oh, we were very busy. This because we we had considered briefly catching up for season three airing, and that that went out the window very quickly as we realised how busy we were at that time. But uh, no, that was a fantastic episode. That's the best episode of the show so far. Yeah. Stand so, out. One of the small moments of direction that I really loved is, you know, when at the very start where Kevin's fallen asleep mm. and he's lying down and the shot's just on his face and his eyes close and then they open and the camera hasn't moved. It still looks like he's lying down and then it swivels around. You kind of see him like he's, he's almost sat up in the in the, the car. Not even almost, he is. Yeah, yeah. He's kind of he's slumped back a bit is yeah. what I mean. but. Yeah, basically that that took a lot of planning to make sure those shots matched up exactly so that it yeah. didn't feel like it moved. Uh, what I also like about that is it actually harkens back to him falling asleep kind of thing was in, you know, when he, when he, it was when he dreamed a couple of episodes ago, but it worked, it was a very similar thing and the idea that he's been doing this Well, that's it, because um, he asks the, the, the bald guy, you know, when was the last time we saw each other? And he goes, oh, it was a few weeks ago. It was, you know, the night he brought the dog home. And he's like, oh, shit, this has been happening. Uh, and he bet on me could rehabilitate him. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, but that's the moment where he realises, no, this wasn't a one-time thing. I yeah. have been losing my grip on some level. Because obviously he spent a lot of the season being worried about it. And it makes you wonder, uh, the deer that got into the kitchen and messed up the place, was that a deer or was that just him? That, that's it. What, what else has he done that he doesn't remember? That's the question now. Yeah, and it, it it makes you think of that that scene where he does go in and get his white shirts from the from the laundry mat or the not the laundry mat the dry cleaners, uh, like that wasn't him going full Jekyll because he was still him and he still wanted his shirts, but yeah. it's like that's almost like a tease of like oh that he's even worse than this when he's well that's it because we just modes. we just kind of get stories of it you know it's like oh you saw Patty you just grabbed her and you're like we're we're doing this yeah and and we get that this was his plan and. Uh, the guy says to him, you know, I, I wanted strong leadership and that's what I thought you were promising and then I get this. And it makes you wonder what sort of conversations do these two have when he's this other person. That's it. That's it, that, isn't it? That he's talking about him being a leader and all, all sorts of shit, crazy shenanigans. Uh, it makes me fascinated though. Like, it makes me feel like something for later this season or next season is we'll have an episode where we don't realise it's actually evil Kevin <laughs> or whatever yeah, you want to call I, him. I can't wait to explore Kevin's psyche properly. Now, now that it's kind of confirmed as to 
Because hmm. obviously we knew he was having the sleep problems. We knew he was going out and forgetting things to some degree because of the dog. But we didn't really get a sense of who he was until you, now. Do you think it's gotten worse since he put all his medication down the toilet? Is that why he's now abducting people when he goes this way? Because he's not even... Well, that's it, isn't it? Yeah. He's not even been held back a little bit by the medication. He's just full on. Yeah, could be. I don't know. Well, that's just a thought. Nah, this was a great episode, though. Oh, it was. It was fantastic. This was, this was easily uh, the best episode of the season so far. That's not to put down the rest of the episodes. It was just... This is where so many things came together that have been building up throughout the season. Uh, and it felt like a proper payoff. Uh, actually, to go back to that day, the line that Nora said that I, I did miss and want to come back to. I may, I may have mentioned it when we we're talking about Jill. Uh, but before they leave, Nora turns that round and says, she, she basically very quickly makes it clear that she knows who Laurie is. Yeah. Uh, it's like, oh, if you're going around handing out apologies, you might want to stop by your doors and give her one. Because she sees how she acts, obviously, at the dinner table, and she sees how much her mother's absence has affected her and how, yeah. you know, how, how much of an angsty girl she is. And uh, it it just it feels what I love about it is that it feels from Nora's point of view very genuine. Like she's actually pissed at what she's done to that family because she because you know, she's getting feelings for Kevin and she at least might like Jill at this point, you know. Uh, but I mean, she's only met her once and she was kind of a bitch to her, so I wouldn't blame her if she didn't like her that much yet. Um, but and then from Laurie's point of view, you get that like how like oh this woman who's now with your ex-husband telling you no go and be a mother <laughs> like go, don't be such an awful mother like how insulting that must feel like and she's trying to like obviously put down the emotions and she's not trying to react like the, you know to these kind of things but i, I like it because it's, it's this really it's one of these things where there's obviously she says that but it's very much oh you could cut the tension with a knife kind of like yeah thing without it it ever really escalating but you feel it in the room anyway because both sides have a really strong point to be Absolutely. upset with the other and it just yeah. it, it works really well it does. Uh, so i like that a lot um, yeah i love that kevin's gonna come home to an empty house because obviously jill's gone oh, amy God. left what, what, what? yeah yeah amy left because uh, her and jill had a phone there I... was a moment where i would have loved as a swerve if it was her knocking at the door oh yeah not instead of jill uh and the dog's been cut loose so yeah he is literally going to come to home to nothing and it makes me wonder how is he going to flip his shit when he finds out his daughters went to the gr like how much did he hate that his wife had went like his teenage daughter but i mean if anything he can storm in there and say no you're coming home <laughs> like you're a minor yeah, yeah. He, he, he has custody because uh, I, I assume laurie has no custodial rights after that well yeah because she's the one who abandoned them so i imagine that she would have given up those by doing that one assumes at, at, the, at the very least like it would be disputed and it would have to go to court and then it would be argued that she did give those rights up. Like, there may not be yeah. anything official yet, but... It would be pretty... You'd imagine it would be pretty easy for Kevin to win. Yeah, any decent lawyer would probably win that for him, I'd imagine. Yeah. It, it doesn't feel like it would be... It's a pretty open and shut case. Like, she, she did abandon them. She stopped communicating with them, including her daughter. Yeah, and Kevin has been a father for the last however many years that Laurie's been gone. Yeah. Um... Maybe just one year, because if I remember right, right when they went, when Laurie and Patty went out to the dinner, they mentioned it had been like eight months since she spoke. So I imagine a little bit of a phasing in period, uh, maybe true. a year, yeah. something yeah. like that. Uh, that's fair enough. Uh, but no, so no. fantastic episode. Yeah. So let us know what you thought of this one. The comments below, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on Twitter at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates. Uh, if you want to support us, head over to patreon.com slash TV. You get leftovers reviews a week early, as you do with any already cancelled, including Star Trek. Um, but obviously other stuff too. So uh, have a look. Uh, but that is us. So thank you very much once again for watching. Keep watching TV. We'll see you next time.